Having said that, I would like to directly go into my sermon. It's already 7 o'clock, so we reached at the end of our regular Sunday service time. And, uh, uh, and today the topic in front of me is a very huge topic and it's a celebration, uh, the ascension of the Lord. I'll try my best to go in a fast track so that uh, we may be able to properly focus on this special day as well and uh, understand what God wants to communicate to us through this special uh, commem commemoration of uh, the ascension of Jesus Christ. The ascension of the law took place 40 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus appeared to many people during these 40 days. And from this time on, onwards, he has changed his mode of appearance, his mode of his revelation. Feast of Ascension of the Lord is from the apostolic period, from book of apostles itself, uh, which is book of Acts. From that point onwards, the feast of uh, the Ascension of the Lord was celebrated. We find the records of the celebration of Ascension of the Lord in 4th and 5th century fathers' writings. And this ascent following 10 days uh, from the ascension of the Lord is called ascension tide. The 10th day after ascension is called Pentecost. And I don't need to speak much about it. And next week uh, our preacher is going to speak about Pentecost. And this ascension of the Lord is not only a feast commem commemorating the past event, but it is also part of the dogma. We Christians, we believe in uh, Nicene Creed, right? That is the dogma as uh, formerly made for all the Christians of this world. In that, we believe that he, was, he, he died, Jesus died, resurrected and ascended into heaven. That is the word we find in the dogma, in the belief, which tells us what we are thinking about, what we are celebrating today. It is not just... <coughs> Uh, any kind of uh, celebration, like just look at uh, uh, Christmas, how much it was spoken about in the dogma. <laughs> Very less, we don't find much in, about the Christmas, except Jesus was born through Virgin Mary. But we read a lot, study a lot about Epiphany, we, we, we find very less. But Ascension of Jesus is one of the important beliefs of Christianity. That is the reason it has also been part of the dogma of Christian faith. And uh, so that tells us it is important and necessary for us to understand what this Ascension of Jesus Christ is. And uh, just today only I realized since the last four years, I was only talking about Ascension of the Lord. <laughs> Uh, for some reason, the schedule worked in such a way. Every time I preached in the last four years, all the ascension days, I only preached the messages. I was going through all my previous messages. And I, before that, I studied for today. Uh, as I was studying through the, my, my previous messages, I still understood. I still realized that what I learned about ascension is much less. And what I have to learn about ascension is much more. So what am I going to bring today is completely different from what I have spoken in the last three years. And still I feel, I, I don't think I will be able to make justice and complete this subject and complete the greatness of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is such a great festival, it is such a great feast, but unfortunately in the Christian world many a times, many people don't even know that there is something festival called ascension of Lord Jesus Christ. There is a feast called Ascension of Lord Jesus Christ. It was not given proper weight. It was not given proper importance that it deserves. Okay. Having said that, let us go and understand, try to explore what this Ascension of the Lord means to us. And, uh, and if you see in the history, till the 4th century, Ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Pentecost, these two were celebrated together. There is a gap of 10 days, but these two were celebrated as one event. Jesus going into heaven and the Holy Spirit coming down on the day of Pentecost. Both of them are together. They are one. One event in one celebration they used to 
celebrate. But from 4th century onwards, it has been separated and separately they were celebrating. And regarding this, I have spoken in the last year. So in, in case if you have any questions, I would like to, to go through our YouTube channel. You will find last year what I have spoken about Ascension of Jesus, why it is celebrated together. And regarding the Ascension of the Lord, the scripture uh, portions that we read are quite uh, paradoxical. You know, what, is, what, what do you think would be the last words of Jesus Christ on earth? The words about ascension. And in other words, what are the last words of Jesus Christ according to book of Matthew? The Great Commission. And book of Acts starts with the last words of Jesus Christ. So Acts chapter 1 verse 9 to 11 which has been read to us. It says, now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So here, Jesus in his last words and the right after last words, what's happening? Jesus is going up. That is, he left the disciples and was going into the sky and the cloud has received him. Let us look at the last words what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. Uh, the last word it says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Last word he said, I am with you to the very end of the age. The next moment what he did, he took a flight to sky. There is a paradox. He said, I am with you and he is going up. It looks completely like, you know, Jesus, just now you said you will be with us. And why are you leaving and going into sky? Right? Apostles, when they have written, they already had the understanding of the ascension of Jesus. But if we are there, we would have gotten confused. So one thing we understand from these two scriptures is the ascension is a kind of paradoxical event. But it has a unique message that we are going to explore. For that you need to listen to me. And this is also a feast of patience and hope. Jesus, as he was leaving, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until I send the helper who came on the day of Pentecost. And the disciples so gladly they returned to Jerusalem and were waiting for the Lord. So it is a feast of uh, patience. They have to wait till the helper comes and they have to wait with the hope. So it is a feast with patience and hope. So before we are going to explore what is that ascension means, let us look at what people think about ascension. Many think ascension of Jesus is the end of his earthly ministry. From this time onwards, Jesus is not going to do his ministry. He was born on Christmas for 33 and of years, whatever he has done on earth, he has done. So finish. His work is done. He is going away. It shows the earthly work of Jesus was accomplished. And it tells Jesus... Return to his heavenly glory. Either kaam katam ho gaya, bichana, sab utaka chale gaya father ke paas. So that's what many people think. And it, it symbolizes Jesus' exaltation by the father. And something, he is the business, sorry, he is in the business of preparing a place for us. We all Christians speak about it a lot. Right? Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you in my father's house. So he left the earth so that he can go and start his construction business in the heaven. And then it indicates the beginning of his work as high priest. And it is a pattern, uh, sorry, it, is, uh, it set the pattern for his return. These are the ways people were understanding the ascension of, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, Jesus told to the, his disciples that, Lo, I am with you to the very end of the age. And the next moment he was leaving and going into heaven. But the disciples were not sad about it. They were not asking like Pravin saying, Lord, just now you said you will be with us and you are leaving. But they were so glad. They were very happy. Disciples had celebrated the Lord leaving the earth and going into the sky. And if you read the Bible, we find gladly they came back and waited for Jesus in Jerusalem. Why were they so glad? The answer is because they were so glad because their master has been taken up and he has been exalted and he rules from the heaven now. He, he has been taken up into the highest place in the entire 
uh, creation uh, and he has, maybe i have to say he has been taken to the highest place that's only i should say because later my words may contradict this okay so disciples saw it as a great honor to jesus that's why they were celebrating it and disciples saw greater fullness of the resurrection as jesus ascended than during the 40 days after the resurrection resurrection is a great event and they have seen the resurrection if they have seen the glory of resurrection for the 40 days and ascension has even much more greater glory and that's what they perceived that's the reason they celebrated and came back happily <coughs> through christmas god came to humans and became one with humans and through ascensions god has taken humanity to heavenly places where god resides that's one of the messages we can understand the ascension, ascension of the lord teaches us that jesus has come and became one like us and he has taken us to be one with the father in the heavenly place and through the pentecost the disciples understood that the ascension of jesus is our ascension the ascension of the lord jesus christ is not just a miracle that happened to jesus where he left the earth and went and seated in the heavenly places that is the reason it is very important for us to understand the ascension of jesus <coughs> The ascension of the Lord is your ascension and my ascension. What did we learn on the Easter day? The resurrection of Jesus is your resurrection and our resurrection. We are celebrating our resurrection with Jesus. Similarly, in the ascension, we are part of Jesus. So Jesus has taken, up, taken us up into heavenly places so the ascension of jesus the exaltation of jesus is exaltation of you and me can i hear an amen isn't it a good news for us it's a great news we forget many a times okay we are still sitting on the earth and saying oh jesus was taken up into heaven no when jesus was taken up into heaven you and i are taken up into heaven we should never forget that so uh, that is the reason Apostle Paul says, um, Apostle Paul says um, in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, he says, But God who is rich in mercy because, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace we have been saved, and raised us up, raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? God has raised us up from the dead and he made us sit in the heavenly places together with Jesus Christ. So that is the reason I am saying the ascension of the Lord is so very important because it is not just the ascension of Jesus Christ only but it is the ascension of your and mine. And each and every one of us who are here, we, are, we have been taken up in Jesus Christ. Having said that, let us look at uh, some other aspects of the ascension of Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one first aspect I could bring about ascension of the Lord is purification. If you read Leviticus chapter 12, 1 to 6, you all know very well, the Bible readers can say how uh, a child will be purified and presented in the presence of the Lord, in the temple. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 to 6, if we read, we understand. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman has conceived and brought a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days. In the, in the days of her customary impurity, she shall be unclean. And on the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised we studied about the circumcision of the lord jesus christ which is january 1st okay so from the eighth uh, eighth day circumcision should be done to the child then it is written she shall then continue in the blood of her purification 33 days first uh, first how many seven days here 33 days total 40 days 40 days of uncleanness okay 
she shall not touch any hallowed thing means any thing that is holy nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification are fulfilled when the days of his her purification are fulfilled whether uh, for a son or a daughter she shall bring to the priest a lamb of the first year as a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove as a sin offering to the door of the tabernacle of meeting when jesus was born luke we read what happened jesus was taken into the temple it is written mary when her purification days are completed they presented jesus in the temple in the old testament also if any new child is born the child can be presented in the temple on the 40th day on 40th day he has to be presented first thing is the child will be purified completely first thing so it speaks about purification so according to book of leviticus uh, old testament things are shadows of the realities in jesus christ so old testament things are speaking about jesus here on the 40th day the child is purified and presented to the lord and here comes jesus when he was born he was born on the 40th day he was presented to the lord the same we find in luke 2:22 Now when the days of purification according to the law of Moses were completed they brought him to the Jerusalem to present him to the Lord we know the scripture and what did they offer two turtle doves so Jesus also continued the same practice and now what is it have anything to do with ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ through the resurrection we all knew that Jesus has become the first born among the dead You read this scripture, right? Romans chapter 8 verse 29 says, And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his Son, that he might be the first born among the many brethren. Jesus Christ is the first born among the many brethren. And... Jesus through his resurrection he has become the first born among all the dead and he became the first born among all brethren on the 40th day of what his day what what did, what did Jesus do he went up to the father and presented himself in other words when Jesus went up to the heaven and presented himself to the father first thing he did was purification of humanity entire humanity is in jesus all humanity was in the resurrection of jesus christ and all humanity was dead and for 40 days the sorry jesus rose again from the dead and a new humanity was born and for 40 days this purification thing has completed and on the 40th day jesus presented the new humanity to god and in that new humanity you and i are part so the ascension of the lord teaches that you and i are completely purified and we are presented in the presence of the lord and why it has to be presented so that jesus may have preeminence jesus may have control over everything he has power over everything that's what it is in colossians chapter 1 verse 18 and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first born from the dead that in all things he may have preeminence it is the will of god that G, that jesus should be on top over everything that is the reason when jesus was dead and resurrected through his resurrection he brought a new humanity through his ascension he has been taken entire new humanity as the elder brother or elder son or someone who has authority over everything elder son is the one who has authority over everything right according to jewish cults custom even at our own houses elder son is the person who has authority over everything after father so here jesus as our elder brother has taken all of us all our new humanity to the heavenly place places so the ascension of jesus is our ascension and in which we are completely purified and presented as new humans in the presence of god and next aspect of ascension we can see is jesus fulfilled the priestly ministry through this ascension 
through the sacrifice of jesus on good friday jesus accomplished everything that is required for our salvation but it does not complete the priestly ministry of jesus jesus said it is finished whatever is required for human salvation it is accomplished there is nothing left he did that but his ministry as he came into earth did not complete he came to do as a priestly ministry he came to do priestly ministry through his incarnation and it has been completed by his ascension see we we know very well how the sacrifices are offered once the sacrifice is offered can we say the uh, the service the worship and offering of service sacrifice is over once the animal is killed no the priest has to kill the animal and has to take the blood and present it to the to the temple they have to sprinkle that blood on the altar that is the old testament thing so on good friday what happened was the sacrifice was done and the priest has to take the blood and offer it to the lord on the in the sanctuary that is left and that's the reason we are saying whatever is required for human salvation has been accomplished by jesus on good friday but his priestly ministry is accomplished or completed by his ascension that's why author of hebrew says in hebrew chapter 9 verse 11 onwards but christ came as high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most highly place once for all having obtained eternal redemption so through his priestly ministry by taking his own blood he completed his priestly ministry and he assured our redemption he completed worship on our behalf he completed sin offering on our behalf he did everything on our behalf as our high priest so mankind is not simply saved by the shedding of christ's blood on calvary please don't pick up the stones my sentence is now my statement is not over okay mankind is not saved and mankind is saved not simply by the shedding of christ's blood on calvary but by the presentation of the blood in the intercession for and the intercession for us before the throne of god just as all the high priest have done in the old testament that's what jesus did through his ascension and there's the same intercession ministry he is doing through his ascension that's uh, paul says in first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 to 6 for there is one god and there is one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all so christ is the both priest and the victim as a bo- bo- both priest and victim he offered himself and he offered his own blood in the te- temple or the heavenly tabernacle and he assured our salvation our redemption and he offered worship on all of our behalf and he has taken us and made us sit in the heavenly places and when we, we all know that very well that when jesus died the temple curtain was torn down right the temple curtain was torn what next what next did any human went into the holy place no jews again took a pin what we call needle and they stitched the curtain <laughs> right <laughs> that's why jesus has torn the heavenly curtain off and he has taken entire humanity into the holy of holies so that is what accomplished by ascension now no jew can stitch the curtain off the curtain is torn and he has taken entire humanity having said that i am coming to my last point um and this is quite a little important for us to understand it is related to our present day lives as jesus was at, was attended ascended did he go away from us did jesus go away from us where did he go the disciples were seeing jesus going up into heaven and a cloud has come and taken him up okay that raises this question and the scripture says that he is taken up into heaven where this heaven where is this heaven can you please help me understand where the heaven is 
in the old testament scripture heaven also is spoken for sky highest place highest things okay but tell me where this heaven is where where god lives we all say god lives in heaven right and after dying we all want to go to heaven where is this place have you uh, have you come across any pamphlets uh, or uh, uh you wanted flyers that may be better word pamphlet pamphlets are fishes of course so uh have you ever come across this flyer which says like you know there are some scientists who were going up into the sky and going up and up and up in the rockets and they heard some good happy beautiful music and great lights and they heard the sound of heaven and they came back and they are testifying there is heaven people you believe you will go to heaven and there are scientists who were digging the earth deeper and deeper and deeper and as they have gone to a certain level uh, they heard the cryings of people and they say oh hell is real if you don't believe you will go to hell have you have you come across these flyers in my age in my childhood there are plenty of them they were circulating if you go high into heaven uh, sorry into sky heaven may be there if you dig deep into the earth hell may be there <laughs> okay uh, my question to you where is this heaven that god lives where is this we all study children you can help me you all studied about space and you were wondering and rockets and various planets we started spoke about it and many of you want to become astronauts can we go if you go into deep uh, quite high into the space can we find heaven if it is the nasa would find <laughs> and uh, uh, tesla and this fellow would have his free uh, would have his rockets going to heaven but scripture says there is no other way that leads us to father except jesus heaven is the place where the father lives <laughs> so where is this heaven hmm. according to our science modern day science physical things the creation is all this space and everything according to our science can god live in heaven this space does god live in the space no <laughs> otherwise as i said spacex will take us to heaven is it on mars i don't know and according to greek philosophers of jesus time and even today and it, it, god does not live in any physical creation on physical places he lives in spiritual places we all hear and we talk about god lives in a spiritual place so you pravin you are you sound like an idiot you are asking about heaven where does the heaven live where is the heaven is it on mars <laughs> is it a spiritual place that's what many say if it is the spiritual place where god lives and how was jesus taken up he was taken up in the physical body your physical body can live in the physical world can a physical body live in the spiritual world can your physical body live in your dreams can your physical body live in your thoughts some kind of spiritual aspect which we can relate to according to greek philosophy god does not live in the physical world so according to modern day science god is not in the space or somewhere in the deep deep high in the space he is somewhere in the physical space, space that's what this uh, spiritual space that's what people say but the reading of the ascension of the lord teaches that jesus went with his physical body into heaven how is it possible what does it teach us two things number one there are spiritual bodies which means there is spiritual aspect as well as the physical aspect that's what apostle paul said when jesus was taken into heaven he did not go away from us because phys in physical aspect only there will be near and far how far is america from india 10 hour journey 20 hour 24 hours okay direct flight 14 hours 14 hours away america how far is america in your dreams or in your thoughts 
how far is america in our thoughts it's right here so there is no distance in the spiritual aspect the distance is always in the physical aspect when jesus was going up and up and up it is showing some kind of physical aspect but the reality is god does not live in the physical aspect okay so where is jesus is he going away no through his ascension he has come even more closer to us even more closer to us that's what we need to understand why because according to the biblical cosmology heaven and earth are not far for us from here to international international space station it takes two days of journey to go up that far it is but according to the biblical cosmology heaven and earth are together they always overlap on each other they are not two separate things they are two things that are together the spiritual aspect of it physical aspect of it are together that's why genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and can anybody help me what it says in the beginning god created thank you very much you are listening to my message so in the beginning god created heavens and the earth he created them together so they are not far from each other and the same concept has been brought into the bible you know what is the image for the heaven and the earth together temple bethel we call it bethel house of the lord many people have temples many religions have temples but jewish understanding of temple is different temples are places where god is worshiped for others but for jewish people temple is a place where god resides where humans and god can come together that is the reason same analogy jesus has taken for his incarnation and he said if you destroy this temple i will rebuild it in 3 days and john comments and says jesus was talking about his body because in jesus heaven and earth has come together because in jesus god and humans have come together in his incarnation so he has become the temple he has become the one where heaven and earth has come together so according to biblical cosmology heaven and earth are not two pl- different places where there are, there is great distance you don't need a rocket to go to heaven where that is the reason jesus said the kingdom of god is at hand how far at hand how far is my hand just right here that's what jesus said the kingdom of god is already here jesus says kingdom of god already has come but sometimes we may not be able to see the same kingdom in our physical eyes but the spiritual aspect of the kingdom is still right here so that's the first thing heaven and earth are not far so jesus is going up into heaven he is not he is leaving us and going into some far place but he is coming much closer to us and next thing is when jesus was taken up into heaven in the physical form the reason the biblical authors and new testament writers they have used this and explained it in part- in this particular manner is because now humanity a physical body has been taken into the higher dimension which is called heaven once upon a time we know only 2d when 2d is there well, this is my left extreme and this is my right extreme which is the closest distance between my left and ex- right this is right and the straight line <laughs> sorry i'm going to last message uh, straight line is the shortest distance between two points can that be the shortest distance no if you bend the straight line and make it a circle which is the shortest distance between the two points there is no distance <laughs> though two points are together okay so in the two the two dimension point a is there x, x uh, sorry x axis is there and y axis is there which is the closest that kind of connects both x axis and y axis somewhere in the diagonal right somewhere in the diagonal where triangular shape comes which is the closest thing that we can create by adding another dimension if you make a 3d and which is far it will be much closer 
So when a new dimension is added, the distance is nullified. And we have seen how Tesseract works, how a cube can be inserted inside the cube and how the Tesseract works. Right? So in that, a new dimension is added. When the new dimension is added, what happened? In the small cube, big cube can be inserted. And in the big cube, small cube can be inserted because it is in the fourth dimension. So when a new dimension is added, the distance is nullified. And they are coming together. So Jesus, when he talked about the kingdom of God, he is talking about the new dimension of life. And which many a times we could not uh, conceptualize it, so we call it spiritual. But it is actually a new dimension of life that Jesus is adding to us. And he has taken the physicality of all of us in his own body and he entered into the new dimension. So where is Jesus now? Since he added an extra dimension, he is right here. That's why he said, wherever two or three people gather in my name, I am there. If we can say that Jesus was taken up in heaven, like in the physical form, leaving some place and going to somebody, some, some other place, how can he be omnipresent? <laughs> omnipresent is someone who is everywhere. How can God be omnipresent? Present? The answer is very simple, by being multidimensional. That's all. By being multidimensional, he is very close to us. He is above us. He is below us. And he is wrapping us up completely. He is with us. And he is in us. That's why Jesus is taken up into heaven, right? Physical form we say. But in the book of Ephesians, it is written, Christ in you. How if he is taken up into heaven, he came into my heart? Because a new dimension has been opened for us. And we are sharing the life. With Jesus Christ. In the new dimension, we are in Him. And in the new dimension, He is in us. His presence is completely made available to us. That is what ascension is teaching. The ascension of the Lord is teaching. Humanity is open to the new dimensions of life, which we are calling the kingdom of God. It has been established already. And Jesus entered into that with His physical body. And if it is a distance, what do we use the language? We use the language of coming and going. Come and go are talking about a distance. But Bible does not use that language. That's why when, G, it is, when it's talking about Jesus, it uses a language called appear. What is appear? Something can be here, suddenly it made visible to us. <laughs> it made visible. That is what called appear. Come and go are talking about a distance. That's why in Colossians 2.10 also it says, when the Lord appears in the clouds, we all will be transformed. When it's talking about Jesus, it uses the word appear. Suddenly, look at uh, resurrection stories of Jesus. Disciples were sitting in the room. Suddenly Jesus came, <laughs> not came, Jesus appeared in the room. Is it not? The narration in the scripture, everywhere it is used the word appear, 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 not coming and going. Because Jesus, through his ascension, through by added new dimension to the life which we call kingdom of God, he is close to us. I wanted to tell you, my brethren, through the ascension, which reminds us that Jesus is close to you. In his ascension, he did not leave you and me. He made his presence available to each and every one of us in each and every situation. Both physical, spiritual, mental, psychological, in every dimension of life, he is close to you. That is the message of ascension. His presence is made available to us. And what is the other place where we can see the presence of the Lord? Very simple. Communion. In the communion, there is the presence of the Lord. I don't want to go behind the controversy behind where is the physical presence or the spiritual presence. No. But one thing we can find very clearly from the scripture, some kind of Jesus presence is in the communion. So, and one way we can experience his presence, one way we can participate with him in life, in the higher dimension of kingdom life, which is the kingdom of God, is by participating in the 
communion let us come forward we all participate in the communion so that uh, we all may experience the kingdom of god which is made a reality for us